Howdy and welcome back to another Bevy tutorial. Last time we got a very simple gameplay loop where the player could buy pigs and after a short while they would be sold for more money than we paid for them. For this episode we're going to finally organize our code into more than one file using Bevy's plugin system. We're also going to learn about one of the most powerful tools in the Bevy ecosystem and how to use community plugins. Finally, we'll cover hierarchies in Bevy and the basics of UI. Overall, the game won't change much in this part, but we'll learn tons of new fundamental skills to take with you into other Bevy projects. So first up, let's break our project out into more than one file. I'm going to move all of the code and systems related to our pigs over to a new file called pigs.rs. To tell Rust about this new file, we're going to add mod pig to the top of main.rs. Now, instead of adding the pig related systems to the app in main, we can create a new strut called a plugin. For now, we just need an empty strut called pig plugin, but you can also have data on this strut for initialization, like the Windows plugin does that we used in the first episode. For this strut, we implement the plugin trait, which requires a single method called build. In build, we are given the app mutably, and we just use it like we were back in main, so we can move all of our add systems calls over here. Now, back in main, all we need to do is add an add plugins call with our new plugin and the game will play exactly like it did before. Plugins are a great way to organize functionality in Bevy, and I often use one plugin per file as my organization system. Plugins can also add other plugins in their build functions, allowing for a nice deep nesting, and they can also even have generic parameters. Finally, plugins are the main way which the community shares code between projects, and most of the things you'll find in the ecosystem will offer a plugin as their interface. So on that note, let's add our first community plugin, the Inspector eGUI. This is an amazing debugging tool, and I highly recommend checking it out in more detail. You can use this to build your own editor-style experience if that's what you want to do. For now though, we're just going to use the quick tools that the crate provides. To use this plugin, we first need to add it to our cargo toml. Now, in main, we can add the world inspector plugin. The inspector also supports run conditions, which are something that we'll cover in more detail in a future video. For now, run conditions just allow us to say if a system should even run, and are a nice way of breaking our game out into various modes. Here, I only want to run the inspector systems on a toggle when I press the escape key. This makes it easy for us to enable and disable the inspector pop-up. Now when we play the game, we see a nice window that shows everything in our game world, and we can see the entities and expect their components, and even change them at runtime. We can also see resources and assets, and change things like the background color. Unfortunately, this won't save between runs, so it's common for me to change things here, and once I'm happy with them, I'll copy them over into the code or configuration file. Also, our custom resources and components don't show up here by default, and our entities have horrible names. To fix the name problem, we can add a bevy built-in component called name to all of our entities. If you're using the inspector, I highly recommend doing this, otherwise the name component doesn't really do anything by default. Now, in the inspector, things have reasonable names and it's much more organized. Next, let's make it where we can edit our custom values. The easiest way to do this is to add a derive statement for reflect and add an attribute for reflecting a resource or a component. The inspector examples have a great reference for how to do this and I highly recommend checking them out. Bevy's reflection systems are super cool and worth looking into if that's something you like. Now, after adding the derives, we just need to register the type with the app. Most built-in components are already registered, so you only need to do this for your new types. I'll also do this for the pig and the player, and for the player I want to use a feature called inspector options, where I can use attributes to set a minimum value for speed. This is just one of the powerful tools that the inspector offers, and you can really create a powerful editor experience out of this specifically designed for your own game. Now when we run the game, I can edit all of the values on my custom components, and I can double check things when there's a bug or something doesn't work like I think it should. Another thing I like to do when working with the inspector is use entity hierarchies. Bevy supports a parent-child relationship between entities, which is the same as most game engines. By default, this will propagate transforms, so moving the parent will also move all of the children. 
This is why we have both a transform component and a global transform. The global transform is what you should read to know where an entity is in world space, and the transform is what you want to write to move an entity relative to its parent. I'm going to move our pigs under a single parent just to organize them in the inspector better. First, I'll create a new system and spawn an entity to be the pig parent. Here, I'll use the spatial bundle, which just adds the transforms and visibilities. Both of these are propagated to children, so it's good practice to use this bundle for empty parent entities. I also add a tag component to mark the parent entity. Now, when we spawn the pig, we want to get the parent entity. Here again, we can use single on the query, because we're requiring one and only one entity has the parent tag. When we want to spawn a pig, first we'll use command.entity to get the entity commands for the parent, and then we can use the with children command. This takes a closure, which uses a child builder to spawn children. For our uses, this is basically a weakened form of commands, and I'll just call it commands here. Now we can spawn the pig like normal, and Bivy will add this as a child to the parent. Next, we need to do one more touch-up where we despawn the pigs. Here, we need to manually tell Bevy to remove the child entity from the parent. Nothing will really break if we don't call remove children here, but the parent will always have the dead entities in the children's list, and this will grow the list into a kind of memory leak each time we create and despawn a new child. And if we ever iterate over the children, we'll have non-existent entities in the list. Finally, let's look at how this works in Bevy. When we have an entity with a parent, it gets the parent component added to it, which lets us get the entity reference. You can query for this like any other component. Also, if the entity has children, then the children component is added, and this is mainly used to iterate over all of the children of a given entity. Using both of these is a good way to climb up and down the hierarchy if your systems need to. In the game, we can now see our pigs are nicely organized in the inspector. This level of complexity might not be worth it for you if you don't use the inspector as much as I do, but hierarchies are used in a few places around Bevy, such as 3D model loading and UI. So on that note, let's look at implementing a very basic UI system to show the player's money. First up, I'm going to make another new file called UI.RS, and I'll create a game UI plugin here. Then, back in main, I need to remember to add mod UI to the top of the file and add the plugin to my app builder. Remember, there's a link in the description to the GitHub repo for this video if you get lost with all of the new files. The first thing I want to add in my new module is a system to spawn the game UI. Here, I use commands.spawn, but this time I want to spawn a node bundle. The node bundle is the fundamental UI bundle in Bevy and has many components related to UI. Some of these are set by the engine as it processes the UI, but the main one that we want to edit is the style component. All UI nodes have a style, and your homework for this video is to read the docs for style. Recently, Bevy has added support for both flex and grid layouts, and has some recommended readings if you're like me and don't have much experience with web dev. The options here are a bit overwhelming for me, so when learning UI, I recommend setting a background color on your nodes, and then changing the settings live in the inspector. Being able to toy around with the layout as the game runs is a great way to earn both the layouts and to get the exact style you're looking for. For our first node, I only want to cover the top 10% of the screen, and I want to center align its children with a 10 pixel padding. I'm also going to set the background color component on the node so we can see it more clearly if you want to try editing it. Now after the spawn command, I want to chain on the with children command we used earlier for pig spawning. Here again, we get a closure, which gives us a weakened command to create child entities with. For this child, I want to spawn a text bundle. This again has a style component, but it also has a text component we want to set. Here, we can use the from section constructor to set the value of the text and its font size. Bevy now has a default font, but as another homework assignment, you can try to load your own font here. It works the same way as loading images, and you just need a font file in the assets folder, and then you use the asset loader to get a font handle. I'm going to leave the style as default here, but I'm going to add a tag component to the text so that we can query for it and easily change the text in our next system. Creating tag components like this is a great way to mark different UI components for editing. 
Now I just need to create a system that can mutate the text component and read our money resource. Then, in this system, I just set the section with our money value using Rust string formatting. Text can be constructed out of multiple sections if you want to have some words be different colors or style, and the bevy examples will show you how to do this. For us, however, this is a one section text field. Now, I can add the spawn game UI systems to the startup schedule, and the update money UI system to the update schedule in our plugin. Now, if the plugin is added to our app builder, when I run the game, we should see our new UI at the top of the screen, and it updates as we spend and earn money. The game hasn't changed much this episode, but we learned a bunch of fundamental skills. We reorganized our code into maintainable modules. We learned how to create our own plugins to organize and share code. We added a community plugin, which gave us a powerful debugging utility. We learned about entity hierarchies. And finally, we create a very basic UI system for our game. I hope you got some value out of this video, and I highly recommend checking out all of the wild plugins in the Bevy community. Tons of brilliant people are always sharing their new plugins on the Bevy Discord, and reading their code is often a great way to learn more about Bevy. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons, YouTube members, and GitHub sponsors, and thank you for watching.